side. This is Fnatic's choice now that they have elected to go red. So they are trying to take the Unicorn strategy for itself. So far, the bands have not changed. We have the Echo, the Braum banned by Unicorns, followed by Fnatic with the cast in, but now the Rek'Sai is banned out. Yeah, the Rek'Sai is banned out. Let's see if the top lane keeps getting hit here. It's the last band going to be another Shen ban, giving maybe the Gnar over to Fnatic themselves. Unicorns, what do you want to first pick? Is it going to be a first pick Sivir? Because the strength of Unicorns has so far has been a really solid opening purple side rotation, where they get two power picks that they can really build their composition on. And right now, as Pyra gets I, uh, really scared and I feel hot water running down my leg. I, uh, I spilled a little on you, I'm sorry. Yeah, never drink and cast. At the same time, especially not tea. He conveniently <laughs> spilled it all in my direction too. My desk is like, I, my notes are gone. I'll, uh, I'll use some of mine to dab it up. Yeah. But as we say it, the uh, the Sivir does come out first rotation after the Karma ban. At least it's better than you <laughs> muting me. Yeah, I've, uh, I've made a couple of mistakes in my time. By the way, the Yasuo was also banned by uh, Unicorns. Unicorn. I mean, why not, right? You I guess. two games, even if you were worried about it. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe they just want to nard themselves and tell Fnatic to play the Shen. Let's see, first rotation here. Sivir first pick as expected. Fnatic can uh, leverage on their Vladimir count or on their mid lane counter picks, so they don't need to lock in Vladimir that early. If they want, they could get. What would they get here? Jungle, AD carry. Mm. But they can match AD carries already revealed. Uh, usually, this is where people go for like their favorite top laner. Top laner plus jungle is, is eventually the rotation here. Yeah, I mean they could grab the nar for themselves. That would be. And in case jungle is revealed, they go like top lane support. I feel. Mm. Timer's ticking down, and they've really hovered on this Nidalee the entire time. The Lucian's locked, and so is the Nidalee. So Spirit, wow. we talked about how this might be a contested pickup. It is going to be picked up for the first time in this series. So they, they get Spirit. the comfort jungler on Spirit, and then they really want to counter pick. Fnatic is saying, you know what, we're going to match whatever's first pick, and that's something you don't see that often. Like usually, first side uh, red, like first pick rotation red side is used to kind of rush some really good picks out that have been left open. Fnatic is saying, you know what, we're comfortable counter picking whatever gets picked up next. And Unicorns, they're building themselves a bulldozer. This is a composition that fits Tarik really well as a support later on too, because you have like range extension, you have a ghost champion in the mid lane. If they lock it in, I would like them to see uh, them play because you have range extension on the Shen ultimate. And that's something that's super important. And it's been really good for Chachi, but even last game when he had the Gnar, it was a story of him still bulldozing over his competition. And I like to see this. I think Unicorns, there's no reason they shouldn't lock both of these things in. Well, time's taken out. They have five more seconds. They'll take all the time they need uh, until they run out of it, that is. So we do see the Vlad and Shen locked, and Unicorns, they have three power picks. Um, I, I imagine Nar Malzahar has to come out for Fnatic. I don't see what I'm missing. I could check my notes for champion picks, but they're a little... Unfortunately, I've ruined them. <laughs> there's a little bit of tea We're on Blind, that. blind for game three, Grappo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, conventionally teams consider um, either Cassidy, which is banned, a decent matchup into Vladimir. There's been the Rise, which is okay, but Fevon to me seems more like a Malzahar player. Although in his in his birth, it was uh, not appreciated. I remember asking him about Malzahar. He tells me this pick sucks. <laughs> After the weekend of LCS where Malzahar had some crazy win rate, he's like, ah, this champ is actually good. So maybe he just goes back to some other old champions. Comfort picks maybe what they need, Fnatic, right now. Yeah, could be the case. And it uh, looks like... They will lock in the Trundle. Yeah, it's a flex. It's also a good matchup into Shen top, you know. Oh, even yeah. even as support, Trundle is a really good pick here because it, it works into Sivir because it punishes the matchup, forcing Unicorns to maybe go Tom Kench over the Tarek that they wanted, unless they have a slightly harder lane to play. And the Tarek is really, uh, the Trundle router is really good into Shen because he can shut down when he lands in. And Fnatic is then allowed to focus the tank as opposed to having to ignore it and pass it by. Yeah, so they get the Talia for Febivin. He did play that one in game number one, but it was a different kind of matchup against the Cassidy. If uh, Unicorns right now want to pick for lane, they pick the Tom Kench to have the Sivir survive the pillar engage. If they pick for kind of the bulldozer comp, they get the Tarek. If they want AFK push and maybe pick potential on this Talia that is locked in, they could go for the Bard. Yeah, and of course, the Elise was always left up and available for moves, so no reason why they wouldn't want to pick that one up for him. So really really good, all uh, question marks on the support. Really good jungle support synergy on that on that Bard Elise here. Really high pick potential. You can move together into the enemy jungle. You can go deeper than you would normally would because you always have that magical journey to get out, and if somebody chases you, they eat a cocoon or a Bard cube on the way out. They value hard. it. Yeah. That's the last rotation for Unicorns of Love. They built a very powerful composition. Fnatic, the only question left to answer is where's the trundle going and what is the last pickup? 
Well, we have seen this a couple of times, but uh, a little more common over in NA. Oh, ooh. don't do it. <laughs> that's, it's, Bananas. It's so Not even it's so incredibly hard to play that comp. Like no CC, no CC Soraka is so hard to play from a team comp point of view. Like they have a Trundle Pillar and they have Talia. Now they're definitely thinking about it. They've got a lot of time before it becomes reality. But you know, this already says the Fnatic they're they're questioning quite a lot here as they get into the last. 15 seconds of their time. This could be game point. This could be the last game for them, I mean. Uh, and their hopes for Worlds. What a story it would be. If they go for Soraka. Taken out Ooh. on a Soraka. The last pick. Five seconds now. Oh, and the last lot. second switch Go back up? to Soraka. Wait a minute. No, pick to Soraka. <laughs> okay. Vegas. They pick Maokai. him up a Maokai. Take me back to an older meta. The Maokai I don't know out. how that song goes. Take me back to Paradise City, uh, where the trees are green. Uh, well, there's one. I don't know how this is going to work out for Fnatic right now. They've got a tank matchup, but one that we have not seen in a long, long time in the top lane. Wow. All right, Tonk versus Tonk on a Maokai. They actually have some additional CC right now. Um, they're definitely going to be struggling in a 1-3-1 in a kind of point of view, so they're going to play 4-1, just hard engage with Teleport Fight. I mean, Nar was available. Yeah, yeah, Nar was available. Even I know that. It's just, maybe they scrimmed ah. it. Maybe it's a secret weapon, you know? All right, well, I thought the Oswald was Maybe this weapon, is but... the LCS script, you know, 0-2 down, last second remaining. Shh, don't give it away. <laughs> Lock in the Maokai, boys. <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be a tough task for Fnatic. Two games down, and the Unicorns are within grasping distance of that final rendezvous with Splice as Nico the Pico steps out on stage first. Shake hands with Sheepy, who's uh, getting there just a little bit too late. That's all about the mental game between the coaches. Make them wait for you. Make them wait for you. Oh, yeah. Well, if you guys think the Unicorns can clean this one out, sweep it away, hashtag UOL win over on Twitter at LLE Sports, or is Fnatic going to fire back? And start living up to that legacy hashtag FNC win. We will find out. The crowd is pumped. And a lot of Unicorns fans out there looking pretty happy right now. Fnatic fans waiting in anticipation. This will be the final game. We will find out as we load up onto Summoner's Rift. Here we go. Game three, Unicorns, Fnatic. Who's going to take it? Tension has to be flowing here. If you're in the Fnatic lineup, such a storied organization, so many high finishes, so much pressure to deliver, and then every week things get worse and worse and worse. You lose your coach, you lose your top laner, you lock in Maokai. <laughs> Let's see. That is the order of worse, apparently. I mean, it's a fine matchup, by the way, into Shen, because like Shen is not going to kill anything. Usually, he out sustains, but if there's a, a tank champion that can sustain, guess what? It is Maokai. Uh, it can fall behind if it gets Dove level 3 by Elise. Uh, Elise has a really quick clear early. Pevin has foregone the Ghost as well. Go for Cleanse here. Really doesn't want to get ganked by or get flashed on it on again or eat the Cocoon early game. That yeah, shows how much respect. I mean, not banning it, but they are really worried about what Chachi can get done on this Shen. And, uh, you know, game one was pretty telling in that regard. Also, if there's any matchup that you can really abuse jungle mid with, it is Nidalee plus Talia. Talia is guaranteed to get the early push up in most matchups. I think even, I would go as far as saying all matchups. And then Nidalee, when she gets a leash, she can really annihilate enemy jungle, especially if everyone can do this whole race trick again, or Raptor trick where he gets the small ones. Exile taking away the minions, but here again, Fevin, look, Exile's trying to even just block a little bit of that Q damage so the range creep don't die as early. There's a leash here for Spirit, so he gets a really good early start. Late smite, so there's no steal coming in. The bot lane will push. Up. Like, Sivir Bar should always just AFK push in. Trundle and the Lucian. But they should be able to farm relatively even. Because if you try and play too much on your advantage, you will just eat a pillar and a strong trade. Yeah, Unicorns, they have definitely gotten the better. A series, though, of the bottom lane. And uh, Reckless is taking Ooh. a little bit of poke from Baritas, oh. bouncing blades and everything. And a turret shot. And it's all even. Yeah, evens out. Seven's back there, exiled. Yeah. Ooh, that's a lot of damage on him to start things off. But uh, he's a Vladimir. They actually went to the Raptors and we missed it. You see, he took away two. Exactly what you need to do. So, prevents the level up from move on the next camp. Yeah, they were working out. First game, definitely worked out early on. And Exile's right back up to health as Fevin is forced to chomp down on a biscuit. Yeah, and uh, Spirit's going for the conventional kind of power clear. Doing all camps. 
most junglers right now on, on this patch, when they play like Rexag and Gragas, they go for Leash on one camp, either Krux or Grom. They go to the one buff and then they rush to the next buff. It is a quick two buff start that leaves you um, free of invades and counterplay. Move right now is going for power clear into Skull Crap and then path over, hoping that Spirit's not in this jungle. It's interesting. He's really solidifying top side vision control and then going back to his jungle. There's a, there is a world where his jungle is now gone. I don't think he has the information that Spirit's not in his jungle. So this is kind of a guess or a read on, on Spirit. Spirit is just going for his full clear and probably like won't get much done in top lane. I drop a ward and that should be about it. Yep. Goes enough. Chachi's there, but he's not too out, far out of position in that river ward. Was yeah. Gonna prove pretty clutch here as Stepman is finding it hard to deal with Exile. And they didn't even need to see that ward because by power of kind of deduction, you could know that he's there because if Elise has access to a red buff and is still alive at this point, you know exactly where River Spirit is because he got a hard leash, he's nidalee, he's gonna path from right to left on the map and you're pathing from left to right, so you should know that this nidalee is around. So Visage Hachi should always be wary to not get dropped low enough to get in dive range. Fnatic alternatively also have a lot of information. Both jungles have been spotted out here, but it's Move who's going for more Skull Crabs and it's Spirit who's going for more hard farm. Yeah, we'll have to find out. Who's going to have the better strategy in that regard? But like, move. Even though he was held down in game one, even though he, you know, didn't look quite as good in game two, it's he's still uh. been able to do so much more for his team. And you take a look at how these mid laners stack up. And yep. move is uh, gonna find Yellow Star and Reckless as he tries to steal himself away at Grom. But they find Reckless. That damage is getting big. Summoner heal use. Magical journeys out. But they take their time. And Yellow Star follows into a whole blessing of unicorns. Teleport right as well. Bottom right of your screen. Two TPs now. This is a fiesta. Oh, it is some kind. And Yellow Star is forced to flash away. Bebevin had already done it. That's two quick flashes burn on the side of Fnatic. No one goes down. No first blood just yet. All ten members. Got the scenic root of the bottom part of Summer's Rift. Let's see at the top lane wave how it is behaving, because that's what you need to look at. It's pushing away from Vizichachi. This is, this is good for Kikis. Like, he's going to get a frozen lane in front of his tower. Vizichachi right now is bleeding farm. Yes, indeed. I'm saying, and Veritas continuing to bully push up. And something we didn't talk about, but another Infernal Drake start. I mean, this this has been like a blessing for unicorns. And Millicent makes a little bit of a mistake, but he's got a journey. And that was pretty magical. Yeah. <laughs> Only with Bard can you play like. <laughs> can you play at enemy turret? I, uh, I believe a, get a third an EU mid later once said, nice champ. Nice champ, by the way. You gotta add the by the way. Oh, Every sorry. I'm not EU enough yet. It's been two years. I'm trying, all right? Uh, it's really dangerous for me to hang out uh, <laughs> with those guys because I start talking like them all the time. Right now, Kikis is catching that wave. He's still down 6 CS here. He was the first one to teleport. Spirit looking to. Keep that minor CS advantage alive. In the end, not much came of it. But the problem was that the majority of flashes that were burned were on the side of Fnatic, it seems. Two for one. Yeah. Two for zero. Actually. Summoner heal only on Veritas, yeah. yeah. So a minor exchange in favor of Unicorns. Feven was allowed to base here on a decent timing. He gets the early Negaton cloak. It's really important into the Vladimir matchup because it really negates a lot of the poke and it allows you to still use your base damage to kill the minions. Like in a Talia matchup, you fight the minions, not the champion usually. And you just get the push pressure and then you can roll. Yep. Ooh. This is gonna fail one time because that pillar can block off the entrance of the portal and knock you out of it. So it's a dangerous game that Hillsang is playing. Yeah, it might bite him. And Fnatic right now, you know, despite the fact that uh, they are down two games, this this early game does not look too terrible from them. Nope. As uh, Yellowstar runs face first into a meep slap. Yeah, this is just uh, it's Hillsang forcing the enemy support to not base immediately because he's faking the freeze. Because if you can freeze, you can hold more CS for your AD carry. The lane is not in an ideal spot. However, he will take so much damage eventually that he has to hold, like stop the freeze. But then the enemy support has to waste some time. It's like, it's like almost a gentleman's agreement. Like you do this, I do this, nice. Yeah, I can't base. Get a nice little holding pattern for a while. So Fnatic, I mean, the game plan for them though, like you've got this Talia, you've got it. You've got pretty early game and mid game power spikes out of the Lucian and the Nidalee as uh, Kekis is going pretty low here. We talked about Chen Nai doing a lot of damage. Yeah, he cannot keep this one up. By the numbers, they uh, add up. They do. He can park this in front of his tower though. Get a bit of a freeze off and then sustain back up here. There is... Fnatic would like to dive this on level 6. The problem is they've used their teleport. And Vizichachi has stand united. There we go. Veritas finds himself blocked. Has a mouse. But he's still under tower. He does have a mouse. He can dodge a spear. And he flashes as well. Really well played. And he sends Fnatic. Going back. That's a really well played by Veritas. Does everything he needs to do. Sidesteps the spear and then flashes over. Stays alive. Has lane control right now too. So Fnatic lose out on that play. Yes, they get a summoner. And more importantly, the communication was there. 
everybody was calm and collected. Vizichachi did not have to use Stand United. And because he didn't disappear, move to go to top lane, and Kikis has to use his flash. Yep. Unicorns have been freed up to do what they want on the map right now, and it's resulting in them having the pressure game. Spirit's gonna have to smite that move down, and Hill is saying he's out once oh, he has to be careful. followed by Spirit. He's using cooldown. Lost. There's gonna be a Talia wall coming in. Hill has gotta flash that one away, but in comes Exile, looking to try and clean up Spirit, but he is deep in three Fnatic members' faces, and he backs out. Yeah, and that's at that moment, Hill is saying new. He <laughs> missed up because if you use your Q, it's on a really long cooldown early in the game. And if you get tagged by Nilly Spear, Spirit's just gonna chase you. Like, you don't have Q up ready when you get out of the portal, and you should always have that ready. Uh, good punish there by Spirit. That's Luckily for him, Flash at least came at the expense of Reaver's Wall. But look at how things have started to change. Move is the one now counter jungling on Spirit, who does pick up at least his small Raptor, so that's something. And that's just how it goes. Fnatic, they are still finding themselves on the back foot. And with such a storied, long history of success, you would think they would have a bigger head to head, but those two games we've seen earlier made it back and even. They came into series six and eight, and because obviously the Unicorns are two and oh right now. It's all time. They're looking for the victory. Even after uh, put themselves ahead on that series all time, it's a very storied one for in sure. In this best of 17, <laughs> Unicorns looking to They're win. They're playing the long game. Yep. Several players later in a couple of splits. It's like when you play um, rock, paper, scissors, and you start at the best of between, you're like, no, 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 it was the best of five. Yeah. No, 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 best of seven. Or tic-tac-toe. Yep. You take the pick. Sometimes you switch games. They'll start going in here to try and clear some more wards out, but... Oh, this is the done. point where the lane breaks in, in terms of mm -hmm. Fnatic's favor, because Sivir does not get combat stats from Nova. She gets mobility to get out of fights there, but both, like, Tempered Fate and On the Hunt are utility spells. The Culling and the Trundle Ultimate give you Subjugate, had to look it up, give you so much kill, par, uh, kill pressure here, but right now, oh kill pressure on Vizichachi. Okay, flashes first, and there's the twist in advance, flash nice. forward for Spirit, and that's first blood. Really cleanly executed here, not trying to juke or throw a spear out at the risk of juking. Waiting for Twisted Advance into Flash Connect Spear. Shift forms and execute there, and they look to trade a turret for Dragon here. It's a race though. We need to look at the turrets too, but it should handily go to Fnatic. Yeah, that's going to be the first Dragon, but we know that hasn't necessarily been as valuable as the first turret gold. And Fnatic should be the ones picking that one up since they only had Veritas on the tower itself. So, with Spirit Kickus backing away, Spirit finishes that one off, gets himself the gold, and Fnatic gets to pocket the rest of it. They have themselves a gold lead. Yeah, and they bounce the wave here, so they make it so that Kikis after this play can still farm. Look at how they took their time killing the turret. It's not because they couldn't do it any faster. They waited for enough enemy creeps to die so that when the waves meet, yet again, the next blue wave at the, the, the remnants of tier one tower top lane of the unicorns, the next blue wave will arrive sooner, it'll push in and it'll bounce back and the minions will push towards Kikis who can then comfortably farm under this tower as well as forcing Vizichachi to overextend farming that lane. So, Fnatic have definitely still got a few tricks off their sleeve. They find themselves with this lead but they are going to need to keep it going if they want to fight themselves back in this series. Remember, two games down, they're still looking for their first win yeah. and to try and drag the series out this a little bit longer. Pick is in a good spot right now. Mm -hmm. One persistent trade for the Early Merc Miner CS deficit. He can get a taunt really easy. He's no longer at risk of really dying to an all-in of Elise and Shen because he has so much magic resistance already. So the top lane is kind of secured here. Kikis has his teleport ready so he can join bot side. And Fnatic, they have the kill pressure in the 2v2 with Lucian, Trundle versus Sivir Bard. So there is a lot more risk right now for Unicorns in the way they're playing their lanes. Mm -hmm. Well. You know, we always think maybe you go up two games like this and you might start to play a little more reckless, a little more cocky in that case, but it's just not happening here. Unicorns are unable to find any more. They do get the taunt off of top side, but Kikis is nice and healthy and Chachi's just gonna keep wailing away, but that Vark is tough. Yeah. Not much else to be said for it, but I mean, Fnatic, you know, they, they've kinda, they've curled, they've defense curl, you know? It's a reason it's still a decent Pokemon move because sometimes when you're backed against the wall, you need to be able to find a way to outlast and outlive, and you know, yeah, that seems to be the game plan. Sending their jungle to the bottom because he has no role to play in top side of the map, no role in mid lane area because it's just a kind of farm and push thing that Feven has already covered. Busy Chachi right now. Move on the other hand, yeah, he's coming. So the taunt is Let's not see. there. There's the repel. He does jump forward point blank. That's going to be the Ventral Maelstrom and the flash at a Kikis. Yeah, he's safe. Good magic resistance. This means there's a cross map play possible. Kikis can base and go for teleport bot lane. Move cannot arrive here in the bot lane. So Visa Chachi can join, but this will still be at best a 5v4. 
They are going to talk on the hunt here. Short range magical journey just to get to the other side of the turret. Teleport's coming and Fevivis coming right into the taunt of Vizichachi. And now it is a party in the bot lane. And that was not a good bar ulti at all. Reckless is managing to take out Veritas. But meanwhile, Fevivin goes down. No one's happy with that play. Yeah, I said 5v4. That was under the assumption that Exile would roam down and join this party with his ghost. But Unicorns did not see it coming. And they had a 5v3. But even in that exchange, because they played it so well, it's only a one for one here, so Unicorns with a magnificent defense on the play. Yeah, they did lose Veritas, but he was dead to rice in any case, and Chachi, they just played that out well. 13 minutes on this clock now. Still, only the first tower had fallen Ooh. up in the top side. And the wave is in a bad spot top lane too. We'll get back to that later. This is how it all starts. So Kikis is low, he's telling his team, guys, we can dive bot lane right now, because Spirit's going from behind. Spirit does not connect. This. This portal here is so good because it throws people off that they're suddenly behind the enemy turret. It gives more time for Shen to land. Veritas is exhausted. Nobody gets access. Everyone gets an instant call into cleanse. The bar ultimate misses just a little bit. Let's just chunk it down to a zoning ulti. And as Feb walks back into the boomerang, he just gets punished here. So the one for zero quickly turns into a greedy one for one. Mistake by Feb. Unfortunately, you definitely need a lot more than that if you want to try and knock down the turrets, get themselves a successful dive. So still low kill game at 14 minutes in, 2-1. Two, two, Fnatic holding that gold lead, but it is not huge right now as Exile finds the Kitty Cat in his lane. He's trying to dodge out from Fevivin, turns on the Emo Plague. He keeps on running, but he's going to get shoved right into them, pulls out. Uh, the heal from Italy is enough to kind of avoid 100-0 here. Exile looking for more sustain here, but he kind of escapes that gank by not burning a single summoner at all. So the pressure right now is being put on Fnatic right now, down. Two games in his best of five. They're only up a thousand gold anymore. They really need to make the next play stick here because Vizichachi has a global advantage, which means Fnatic are at risk of having happen what they're trying to do earlier. A bot lane dive. Hillsen can just simply ulti the tower plus a couple of members. They can set up for a dive, and then it's very easy for the unicorns to pull the trigger. Yeah, they've got teleport available for Vizichachi should they want to use it, clearing the wave out ahead of time to start pushing this one forward. Yeah, and look at Exile, because he now has the push, because he has level 11 over Fevvin. Despite getting out. ganked, he had the control here. Unicorns looking to pull the trigger. And there's on the hunt. That's the one pop. There goes the Bard ulti, zoning Yellowstar right back into the team. The boomerang comes on back and moves, sinks his fangs in for the kill. A double slap there onto Spirit and Reckless. Hill is saying they can get this tower easy. Yeah, Hill is saying played it so well. He goes for the flash Q saying, you know, if you stay, you're dead. You have to flash. Then he goes for a double bar ultimate, forcing one flash on Reckless and forcing Yellowstar at the same time to juke forward, leaving him no escape path for the cocoon that followed. Unicorns as a team in unison, they leave Yellowstar with zero escape options. Despite him playing it as best as he could, he still dies and they take him down. And that's calculated moves by the Unicorn. So with that, they just about even up the gold. Chachi and Kikis continue to slug it out up in this top side, but Chachi does not have a tower and Spirit is coming around the backside. He has to be careful if he wants to survive this one. Arcane Smash and it is tagged in the Kitty Cat. Chachi still hanging firm. He's gonna taunt away, trying for the dodge. He does get it the flash forward. Not sure if that's what he wanted, the Spear Connect. Ah, he was trying to dodge the damage with the flash, but it still hit him just a bit, I think. Maybe if he got over a wall somewhere, he could have survived. Chachi honestly overextending. He has no place being that far up. When in Italy could join him in that duel. As he found out, so Fnatic, they get another kill onto the Nidalee. Spirit trying his best to get big. Yeah, but they only lose a blue buff, and Vladimir doesn't really need it, nor does Move at this point. So, considering that Move is spending all his time really on the bot side of the map, setting up for the next dragon, they're actually okay here. They don't lose too much. The turret is also not getting chunked on the top lane, so it is just a kill. If a kill leads to an objective, yes, it matters a lot, but in the, in the scope of things, it only snowballs Spirit further just a little bit. So unless Spirit really finds a target with his next few spears and gets an assassination, the kill doesn't mean that much in the grand story of the game. And Unicorns, they've been the ones that have been able to secure objectives off the back of kills. This time, they just do it by virtue of knowing Spirit was in the jungle, clearing things away. Fnatic were not in position to contest the Cloud Drake, so at 17 minutes, they secured themselves a bit of extra movement speed out of combat. Yeah, there's a lot of target lockdown here. And a lot of get out of target lockdown. Yeah, but if this happens later in a fight, Kiki is does twisted advance. Yellowstar puts his subjugate on the target. If, even if it is Vizichachi, this guy will melt. So there is uh, a lot of potential to 100 0 a single target on the side of Fnatic. Yep. Double Meep Slap comes in once again. Hellasang yep. playing without a whole lot of fear as the uh, Pink Ward is looking pretty tasty. But in comes Veritas on the hunt and Spell Shield right ahead of time. Spear is dodged. 
And now they're looking for Yellowstar yet again. He has nowhere to go, and Veritas polishes him off with ease. There goes the ultimate a little bit too late or a little bit not in the right spot, but it doesn't matter. They bring Chachi to the party and take down Reckless, demolishing him where he stands. And now they are moving for Ooh. Tier 2 Tower. Yellowstar and Lana, a couple of clutch bindings here. It was merely a distraction to Tempered Fate. Awaiting the carriage oh, that was thing. Shen plus Vladimir. Oh no, he's he's mad molding it right now. He's trying the best he can, but Spirit realizes this is an isolated 1v1 right now. And Hillsing, he has no flash available, but all of a sudden it's the bait. Veritas looking to chase him down, but he's caught himself. Oh, who's baiting who? Fabian taking out move, and he even manages to secure another kill onto Veritas. The triple for the Talia before he's shut down by Exile. Unicorns play that one sloppy. Yeah, who was baiting who there? But it was Hillsing that all. Set that play up for failure here. The magical journey, it was simply too deep. He was saying, major mistake there. Sucked in his team into that play too. Could have just said, what guys, oopsie, let me die. But now four kills go to Fnatic and this game turns on its head. Yeah, that got a little bit crazy, a little too fast. And meanwhile, Kikis was getting free time on the top tier too. So Chachi's back and he is putting up the defense here, but there's still a level disadvantage. The taunt doesn't go where they wanted, and Spirit is even able to peck away at this turret. This could really give Fnatic some much needed gold. Yeah, this is a, a throw if we've ever seen one. The House of Cards starts falling down, and Fnatic with a fantastic punish. They kept fighting in a situation where they were down so much. Look here, they're overextending in the bot lane, going aggressive on the bar, double stun queued up, all avoidable. There's still portal available, so this Hillisang was always fine, and like. I don't know what Fnatic is trying to achieve with this play. It almost reeks of desperation. Right now, Hillisign goes for a really long range tempered fate, only to kind of just force Reckless to droop back, and that puts him in a position where Exile can always snipe him out. So, right now, Unicorns of Love have taken out two members. They have access to the turret, they get a double stun reset. They don't have a wave, so they just reset the play here. Okay, here's the wave. They do have one. But as it falls down, look, the wave's gone, and they're forced to tank the turret. Well, Hillisign is. Going ham. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Maokai is pushing. This is a complete macro error. Look at how low they are. And then Feminine comes in beautifully oh, yeah. with the damage here. That flashed aggressively inwards, puts him away from the Exile EQ combo too. So that was really well played by Feminine. It does manage to come up pretty big. And Feminine is a player that we've criticized quite a lot in the playoff performance. Not a lot of games uh, that he really had, but it, it just was enough to snuff. And you, we talked about it even on the desk. I mean, this is a guy who's not been at his 2015 form for a Definitely while now, not. but that was a glimmer of the Febivin that was. If he ever's gonna come back, it's after being having three kills on a pink platter. That's for sure. He's got himself a few more shiny items there. Unicorn's looking to control this Dragon Pit, but there's nothing to really take at it. Uh, aside from just having the vision on the river, Spirit yep. back in his own jungle, still trying to take away some Groms. All those things, Unicorn's clearing away a few more wards of their own. It's really important for the Unicorns to not allow Fnatic to have any oh. flying wards. That's fine, he's out of range for the leap. He didn't have a mouse. Um, well, he had Fog of War, then it doesn't count. Okay, fair enough. But if Fnatic can find a flank ward with the Maokai and teleport in, that's their ideal way of sensing these objectives. But right now, Unicorns, their whole setup that they're, they love to do so much, they can't really do anymore because they have to shed in the bot lane. Sivir's dealing with the wave in top. So this Ocean Drake that they're prepping, maybe they'll switch it out back later. Um, it's being rough because right now, they don't know where Nilly is, I feel. Like Nilly could be ganking Sivir right now and Unicorns could be dead to rights. Look where he's backing too. Really Damn. bold base here from Veritas moving that deep into the lane. Vision game from the Unicorns has definitely lacked a bit more this game. And you know, we entered 20 minutes, 22 minutes into this game, and now Unicorns still in this gold deficit. Fnatic doing work with what they have, even though Febivin does back within Vision. Doesn't really matter since Unicorns can't do too much about that right now. They've sent Chachi down bottom side and they're just trying to damage control on the side waves, get what they can do. They have chip damage on quite a lot of these turrets, but they just haven't been able to mass an attack to finish the job. Yeah. The Although, Veritas should get mid. Yeah. Next objective is that tier 1 tower for the Unicorns, and I hopefully want to leverage that into... Uh-oh. Uh, we'll He's fine. Just a little chunk. Tower falls, which gives them access to the map, which can give them access to the setup for either Baron or Dragon. Unicorns could lean left on the map. Mm, exile. He's going way deep to get the taunt on, and they turn forward for Reckless. Here they have the damage. Full calling comes out. He's getting himself some health back, but not enough. Too little, too late, but it is a party up top. And now Chachi misses the taunt he wanted. Hillisang is going to have to temper that fate of Yellow Stars right now as Chachi is looking to get out of town. Move is tagging his way in. They found Kikis, but that tree is just too tanky. Another taunt. Move sinks his fangs and finds another kill. And Spirit, they're looking for even more. How not enough. Hell, did Veritas survive that? Everybody from the Unicorns threw, threw their bodies in front of him, trying to block the spears, block the damage. Hillisang came out oh, big. Man. 
Looking for a couple of Bart slaps into Spirit's face here, but that was so close. Looked so good for Fnatic for a while. Reckless did the best he could on that dive. Aside from not being in that spot, there's not much more he could have done. But then the Unicorns end up winning that fight so surprisingly well. 22 minute Baron attempt right now. Spirit's still here. He has gotten a little bit of health back from some heals. Throws the Spirit just to sit the Unicorns. That's gonna get smited down by move. Unicorns of Love picking up the first Baron of the game. Yeah, he had no vision in the pit. If he had vision in the pit, he could have uh, left forward and execute that Baron. This is how it starts here. Yeah. XL just ignores Yellow Star. If you're reckless right now, you're not having fun. Like, this is... What more can this guy do? He jukes a Talon, puts up the calling, and then look at Veritas walking into this fight. He is on 20%, enters, Kikis gets him, he gets the heal, Cuckoo. Block one spear, Yellowstar can't get there because of the, the double tom. It was a stun of the Kikis too, and then Boomerang Blades or Ricochets were out to keep him alive. So close to dying, and if this guy lives, it means that Baron goes down. If he dies, it means that Fnatic have one more shot in this series. But right now, Unicorns again with a crucial Baron. That's 3 for 3 in this series. A really early Baron on the back of a pretty chaotic fight. Well, the Unicorn's coming out on top in that one. They've got themselves right back in the gold lead. And although Fnatic were able to finish off bottom tower, well, look what's happening in mid. It's going to be another one for Unicorns with the Baron Empowered Minions. The last of them, they managed to take this out. Finally can finish off the tower in the top with Exile. And they are right back in the 1-3-1 game. Yeah, 1-3-1. Vladimir with Baron buff. Like, there's... If you can hold them in a duel, maybe. With the Baron buff, it's so hard to play against. The only way you can get them is if you can catch them. And they have on the hunt, Magical Journey, and Toons to kind of peel you back here. A little bit bold here, oh, Spirit boy. aggressively defending. He does get himself the red buff. Time Weaver's wall They've has... They've cut off Exile, but not forever. That's not the greatest wall we've ever done seen. But uh, Spirit exhaust on him, and they bring Stan United over to Exile, trying to distract from the rest. And Star runs right into the rest of the Unicorns. Meanwhile, they get the taunt off onto Spirit, chasing him down. Move is putting a whole lot of damage out. Yellowstar's going to fall to Veritas. The Baron of Power minions are doing work. The tower's trying its best, but Fnatic are starting to fall apart. A double kill over to Veritas, and that's going to be a tier oh, two. Oh, thanks, Bard. It's been a pleasure to watch in this fight, weaving himself in and out. Visitage as well, walking into Spears, making sure that they create space for their carries. Exile and Veritas have had free access to whatever they want in all these fights, because Unicorns, as a team, are convinced convincingly winning them. 25 minutes in, they're on to the base. They've got themselves inhibitor number one. Chachi went back and teleported right back into mid. He's pushing a wave, leading it forward. Fnatic struggling here as Move just barely gets out with his life. Fnatic have not missed Worlds since season two. That's about to change. Yeah, it's about to change. It's the only World Final that they've missed. And they've done so well in many others. Two semifinals. One victory in season one, you can see if it's much or Spirit not. The automatical journey. Mode. Q is up again, so Spirit's gonna Spirit. die. Oh no, he can't get the job done. Exile shuts him down. Yellow Star is in the mix. And Hillisang lives, Move lives. Who has to run here? There's nobody who can close the gap because this time, if Nidalee falls into a bar tunnel, he has Q up again at the end of it because he's building plenty of CDR. Lock it. Uh, Ionian boots and here. And there, no, what the this hell? Appears. That been. He didn't know what hit him. I mean, two ricochets and a boomerang. Ah, that's uh... And he has plenty of time to click death recap right now. Holy crit, man. It's all falling down okay, right now. Okay, let's take a look at this again. So, you think... Exile is telling them, I'm not, like, caught in here with you. <laughs> you guys are caught in here with me. He barely gets tagged by the calling, too. Okay, more on the back side of it. He takes, then... takes it just for a motivational yeah. boost. It'll make me angry. Yeah. Hulk's out. Maokai stop. Kevin poke. Turn around. Look at Hillisang. Flanking in these fights with the double Qs. He's about, his next Q is going to force a flash, I think. He's going to walk around. And he's going to force a potential double Q here on the bot side. Kikis is trying to peel. Feminine has to flash that one. Otherwise, him and Reckless would have gotten stunned. Veritas and Exile untouched because there's so much looming threat. Taunts, cocoons, bindings coming out. It's so hard for Fnatic to play this comp from behind. Yeah, and now they're going to have to worry. Yeah, Febivin knows. Yeah, I mean, we have to. It's like, a bad situation. We can criticize it. It has to be the wall. The worst feeling in the world to miss a world championship. Okay, they turn on to Veritas, but look at that. Chachi had already had the ultimate on for him right now. Veritas is still hanging strong. They're gunning for him here, but they just can't finish off the job. Reckless, yeah, they managed to get the shutdown. It was Yellowstar that did it, but they've lost. Febivin and Reckless in the back of it all. Exile chasing now onto Spirit. There are no Fnatic members left except for Kikis and Spirit. Exile's going the extra mile, and he finishes on top of Fountain. That is gonna be it! 27 minutes into the game! They catch the AD carry Veritas, but Spirit's refuge was enough 
to keep him alive. Really good by Vizichachi. That zoning spell blocked the all attacks. Kept him alive, and then Unicorns win the fight right now. Hilosang is toying with Tikis, but the Nexus is going down. The Nexus is going down. There's nothing left right now. Fnatic, they're gonna get taken out. Unicorns, they're gonna complete the sweep. 27 and a half minutes in for a final showdown with Splice! Unicorns of Love get themselves one step closer to the World Championships. They've never been in, but they have never looked so good coming up. And honestly, redemption for this team as well. One, two, three, in the playoffs. Number six seed, I believe. They showed up. They showed up. And they can confidently call themselves a top four team at the least right now in Europe. The way they ended this split. They fought Giants. They fought Fnatic. Right now they're really congratulated by former jungler Kikis. <laughs> oh. Well, remains certainly confident enough. I hope it's not a permanent marker, but. Hopefully, <laughs> this win gets them plenty of sponsors so they can afford a notebook. <laughs> So their manager has, doesn't have to doesn't have to ride on himself and ride on his body. Well, he goes the extra mile, and the unicorns of love were just charging out of control. They have not dropped a game in the gauntlet so far, and this is they're up against the final boss. It's going to be tough, but I mean, we've seen teams run the gauntlet before, and the unicorns. There is no denying this team is hot, and they have momentum, and that's something that's very important because they haven't really revealed too much pick ban wise in the last few games, but they have. Honestly, mental fortitude and have momentum. And that is maybe what can help in their series versus Spice. Everybody agrees that Spice is the favorite. But I think after watching the manner in which Unicorns have taken these last two games, this last match is a lot more exciting than it could have been. Yeah, I mean, it shows so much growth on the Unicorns because even in the, the third place match, we saw a lot of mistakes, a lot of stumbling blocks that did end up sinking them against H2K. But this is, they took the time they had to practice and they made the most out of it and you see this growth. This is a huge amount of practice. You look at the team like Cloud9 last year, and they said they got so much practice out of running the gauntlet. I mean, they so played more games in the gauntlet that's than they true. did in their entire season. But, uh, I mean, but that's, that's the kind of thing that you can get so much out of in a short period of time. And Splice, you know, they've been practicing, they've been watching and waiting, but the Unicorns are coming for them now. But, but Splice have been playing with Fnatic, and while yes, it's true that Unicorns have been improving, we need to watch out how they do against a team that actually pushes back macro-wise. Because this Fnatic was lackluster. They failed to pull the trigger on the key moments. Um, they gave it their all. And you could see still how much it meant to the players. Because mm -hmm. even if things don't go too well, personally, I've been in that seat. And losing that final game that denies you a chance to go to the World Finals is honestly heartbreaking. So if there's fans out there for Fnatic and any of the teams that have missed their spot to Worlds, make sure you reach out to them, show you their support, because that's when they need it the most. For Unicorns, they're going to need all the support tomorrow uh, versus Spice because that should be, honestly, a fantastic series with an important prize at the end. Yeah, it'll be a tough series indeed, but they got a big sweep here today, a big win, and for more on it, see if it's standing.